G'day guys, today we're talking about the round shield. This shield was iconic, it goes back right into the classical period and right throughout the whole medieval period, right into the renaissance period and in fact beyond and has, a, and has had a resurrection more recently with police units uh, and is used by riot squads and specialist police units uh, even today. So when we're talking about the, the round shield, I guess... Uh, um, Perhaps the Vikings are more famous than some cultures for using it, but certainly the Greeks used a round shield or a type of round shield uh, called the hoplite, I believe. You also had round shields being used by many, many cultures right throughout Africa, right throughout the, today's Middle East. Uh, you see um, shields, round shields being used by what is today modern India or Pakistan or Afghanistan, those sorts of areas. Um, so this was a common shield through many, many, many different cultures over possibly as much as 2,000 years or more. The Romans certainly used it and their shield was called a palmer. It indeed had a shield boss just like the Roman scutum did. The shape of the shield is an incredibly versatile shield. It means that I can conduct strikes from above, beyond, to the side, through the behind. It means that I can use longer weapons such as the spear along with my uh, my shield uh, which I wouldn't necessarily be able to do certainly not as well with something like a scutum. One of the key advantages of the round shield like this is that I can change flanks really easily. But what am I meaning by flanks? Well if you think today's modern army, we have fronts and we have flanks. So flanks are our side positions. So I can go from a front, I can go from a, a front position like so, and the entire shield wall can rotate round quite easily, and I can make a shield wall here, and then quite easily I can move it and reform on the other side which again, I would struggle to do with some of the other shields, such as the kite shield, or again, the Roman scutum. When we talk about construction of the round shield, it's very interesting. These shields would have been constructed from something like poplar or linden wood, which was very lightweight. You had a singular handle on the rear, which attached uh, the planks to each other. The back and front facings were lined with either coarse linen or uh, rawhide. Coarse linen wouldn't have been the preference, but if you were someone, perhaps you were an Anglo-Saxon in the fjord or something like that, then um, perhaps you wouldn't necessarily need to have a a very expensive or fancy shield and perhaps your money and time is invested elsewhere. You're only doing 40 or so days of service and during some periods in the uh, 10th century there really wasn't a great deal of conflict going on. Now my rawhide, correction, my, my edge has been bound with rawhide and then that stops the strikes which would come in from the side from an opponent's axe or shield and then we have the shield boss. And the shield boss is a really interesting and unique item. It's been used on many different shields, such as the Roman scutum, but mostly on round shields. And what it does is it allows me to move my center of gravity into the shield so that I can hold the shield almost vertically without really any effort whatsoever. The round shield was an incredibly versatile weapon in itself and 
it was really good from the point of view that um, it had many, many advantages over other types of shields. I can strike with it. It affords me a great deal of protection when I'm using it. And if you can see how I might approach an enemy, then that would probably explain the lack of hand armor as seen on throughout the kind of early medieval period. It's much easier to rotate. They're very easy to make and relatively inexpensive. It provides a great deal of protection and I think this is in many ways um, better than some of the other types of shields around at the time. Because of the center grip on the shield, what that does, what that does is it allows me to move my position away from my opponent and provide me with a much greater level of protection from some of their weapons, um, which I wouldn't be able to do if I had a strap shield on. The disadvantage of the round shield, of course, is that it's absolutely hopeless um, if I was using it in a cavalry environment, which quite possibly explains why the kite shield raised to prominence during the sort of 950s and 960s, long before the Battle of Hastings. Interestingly, Anglo-Saxons are thought to have more predominantly used the lenticular shield. That is like a cone-shaped shield. Certainly, you can see this in a great deal of the artwork from the time. And that's quite interesting. A lot of people, however, think that uh, that was more of a, uh, I guess, a nobility or perhaps for the Hiscals, because the lenticular shields were made up of uh, more pieces of wood rather than the round shields as we see them. And because of the dome shape, you tend to have it, it's more of a complicated build. And according to studies that have been done by people like Mike Lodes, it appears that the um, round, sh the lenticular shields were not as strong as some of the flatter round shields like this, but seem to have certainly been more prominent with the likes of the Vikings and arguably would have been more with the, um, the Anglo-Saxon fjords and that kind of thing. Okay, now let's have a look at uh, shield position. So we know that this kind of shield position was definitely quite good. This gave a great deal of protection to my non-dominant hand and I can provide myself with a great deal of protection with my shield in this position. In terms of shield walls, I would have had to hold my shield out like so, and that would have meant, and it, it's quite a tiring position to hold a shield, which probably would have weighed a combat shield at least two kilos, two or maybe three kilos. Um, and to hold it like that it, for any substantial amount of time is, is really quite taxing on the body. And you have to uh, have systems in place whereby the front rank of your shield wall could change places and allow themselves uh, time uh, to, to get some rest before being moved through to the front rank again. And we know the Romans definitely had some very well organized systems to allow this to occur. Other positions with the shield seem to have been quite far out and that provides me with a, a phenomenal amount of protection and certainly if I'm using it like this it, it means it's quite good to use with something like a projectile weapon such as a spear or I can do that in conjunction with a second or third person and um, they can use their spears to devastating effect uh, with the use of two shields.